For example, slicing 20 by 20 by 20.1 mm cube with a layer of 0.2 would typically result in final result of that. Oh, really? So I guess that's why sometimes your 3D printing part is bigger or smaller than you anticipated. Hello, welcome to Scratch 3D Printing. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Walker Slicer's version 2.1 beta release. Let's scratch to this topic. I want to thank Shiriga for posting Walker Slicer version 2.1 on Discord and alert me that it has a new update or I will not have figured out that Walker Slicer has a new update. So before we look into the change of Walker Slicer's version 2.1, I just want to talk about my experience with Walker Slicer a little bit and then we will jump right into the new stuff. For me, Walker Slicer has been a great slicer. I've been using Walker Slicer for like five to six months now and it's just been amazing for me. I have no problem with Orca Slicer. The interface is quite complicated to use when you are just getting started and once you get used to it, it's like easy to use and it's super friendly and they just have all the right correct setting. And you can also edit each individual object by itself using the object tool. Overall, Orca Slicer has just been great and with every single update that they put out, I'm just very excited to check it out because it's just that much more exciting knowing that you are going to get something more better with every single update. And with Workers Lesser, I have not found that much bugs or some, sometimes it does crash, but those are just like super rare. And yeah, Workers Lesser has just been a great slicer, unlike some slicers. Okay, enough with that. Let's jump right into Orca Slicer version 2.1 with all the new things. Now let's take a look at Orca Slicer version 2.1 beta release. This is actually my first time of actually checking out Orca Slicer version 2.1. So this might not be like a super in-depth of what they have added. It's just be like an overview and then I will learn more with this new update and make a future video. So now let's take a look at the first thing that they added. Okay, Slicer now features brand new icon. Thank you to YW4Z, nice. Okay, so they redesigned their new icons here, which looks great. Looks 3D-ish, right? Okay, the second thing is Orca Slicer now supports open import model from printable.com, Thingiverse, make a war directly by soft fever and all oh, crafty one i think that's how you pronounce it no more manual downloads you can now open models directly from sites oh my gosh and it will open automatically to orcas lessons just like this video down here so this is printable it will open ah uh, so it will have orcas lesser right there and then you open it up in orcas lesser and it will just automatically import it in there which is cool same thing in thingiverse and make a world it's gonna have okay okay it's gonna have all of those things it says bamboo but you can open it on orca slicer you can enable this feature in the preference dialog okay currently available for windows oh people that don't have windows you can't really use this yet but it will definitely come with mac and linux once this is fully released i hope so Okay, next thing, infill direction enhancement by soft fever. Orca Slicer now allows users to set sparse and solid infill directions independently. Wow, that is amazing. Not quite sure if any other slicer has this feature, but maybe they do. I just don't know yet. User can also disable solid infill direction, which is useful for printing with transparent materials. Yes. So now we can print with transparent materials and see clearer through it. Okay, let's see this video. Not plain. No. Okay, there we go. Oh, look at that. Ah, uh, now it's up and down. Earlier it was left and right. Wow, that is so amazing. You can customize however you want your 3D printed model to be now. New sparse infill pattern cross hatch and optimized by soft. In this release, a new info pattern called Crosshash has been introduced into Orca Slicer thanks to Bamboo Studio. The pattern is similar to Jaro and the new 3D Honeycomb. Introduced in Orca Slicer's V2 RC, but offers faster printing speed. Oh, really? Orca has further optimized this info pattern to enhance its performance at low infill density. I have always seen problems with low infill percentage because if you go with such a low percentage the top layer is just gonna be bad it doesn't have the info to support the top layer so hopefully they actually enhance that so this is the before and now it's the after oh my gosh let's just look at that so before that's the 10 percent info and that's the five percent info which like i said it's very bad for the top layers because it doesn't really have the infills to support it. But now, after they optimize it, the 10% infill seems so much more now. You can see that here has a huge gap, and here it has a teeny tiny gap. So 
this is probably like a 20% infill-ish. So now you can use less percent infill and get more coverage. But I'm not sure if that's still the same as like 20% infill up here because you're using more materials, it seems like. Or, or maybe it's less material, but just look like it's closer together. And the 5% infill just looks so much better, in my opinion. With this, you have smaller bridging, which makes your top layer so much better. Improved seam performance. On this one, the seam's here. But on this one, it's gone. Not quite sure what happened. Maybe it's like right there, and then on the other side. But let's take a look at the bench sheet that they have printed. Look at this. This, I believe, on the left here is the one that's the older version. And the right here is the one with the newer version. You can see that in the middle here, there's like a seam right there, which makes the print look bad. And on the right here, the seam is just like one continuous line, or it's basically gone. Oh my gosh, I'll be testing this. Support larger printer. Nice. Orca Slicer only supports printer size smaller than this, this due to limitation of 32 bit data type. Orca Slicer now supports size as large as desired. Oh my gosh. That is good for like many people out there that are like having a 3D print farm or have a huge 3D printer. But just for like consumers, daily users like us, it's totally fine with this. To be honest, I don't think there's a 3D printer that's going to be this big. Unless you're printing house. Super Slicer is reference for some changes. ESP 3D printer connection for wireless printing. ESP 3D printers can connect to worker slicers wirelessly. Not quite sure what that is. This It's the first time I see this, but it's good that they are making worker slicers compatible with more 3D printers. Fix wrong overhang slowdown values. I have not looked at this closely. It's nice that they fix a bug that overhang slowdown may slow down too much in some cases before it shows down to 4 millimeters per second despite we had minimum speed of 10. Okay, so if we look at right here, right? Overhang speed, yeah, they do have 10 millimeters. But if you look at the color scheme here, it's only it shows 4. And in the new version, 10 millimeters. It's 12 millimeters for the slowdown speed, which is nice. It's good that they fix all these bugs and not make it bigger. And then later, don't know what is causing the error. It's good that they fix it now. SEMM introduced parameters to control the maximum speed used for purging in the purge tower. Previously, the speed limit is set to 90 millimeters per second. Okay, a max speed has been introduced to the purge tower. Also, adjust infill while overlap for top and bottom servers. Independent adjustment with infill slash wall overlap for internal solid and sparse infill nice they just make it so much like modular and you can control things individually now not like one setting for which i'm starting to really love now touchpad friendly 3d navigation amazing implement free can inspire touchpad navigation mode okay let's see preference camera style touchpad okay Nice, so those of you that like the touchpad, Orca Slicer now has it. Orca Slicer default parameters to improve the quality and print speed for all printers. Amazing. Fix a bug that top surface was mistaken as bridge in some cases. I'm not quite sure, but I think sometimes I did kind of see this and I thought it was just normal, but it's a bug. So it's nice that they fix it now, right? See right there is top layer, but it's like a bridging. As you can see here, bridge is blue. That is blue. Precise Z height. Nice. Precise Z height. When enable, this option ensures that the accurate Z height of the model are, for example, slicing 20 by 20 by 20.1 mm cube with a layer of 0.2 would typically result in final result of that. Oh, really? So I guess that's why sometimes your 3D print part is bigger or smaller than you anticipated. By enable this parameter, the layer height of the last five layer is adjusted so that the final scale height matches the actual object height wow this is gonna be so amazing and this feature is from bamboo studio this is actually really nice now so that you can get more accurate 3d printed parts instead of 20.1 and the final height is 20.2 which is just great and they just have lots of things from bamboo studio and other things remove checks to disable nozzle override as the offsets to pressure events collaborations nice one more stuff yeah it's just all fixes it's just more features that they have added and just so much things down here oh my goodness dude walker slicer is amazing and here let's go creative k1 series improvements bye bye story amazing 
already came one. Oh, and look at this ender 3v3 initial commit so i think they just started to add the ender 3v3 into orcas lessers so hopefully maybe in the next update or the 40 release we'll have an ender 3v3 profile but i did make an ender 3v3 profile so if you have an ender 3v3 and you need a profile i will leave a link down below so you can go and get that profile or check out the video that i make for this 3d printer wow this is so much things that they have added oh my goodness and nice if you want to download you can go all the way down and here's the download assets and well yeah that is it with orca slicer v2.1 i am so excited to try out all of the stuff i didn't realize that they have added so many things in just one update all of the features and bugs that they have fixed in this version 2.1 will be so great for the slicer and it will be so great for us user so that we have a more friendly slicer user it will be more complicated but if we learn the slicer it will be so great all of the print quality from Warcraft Lesser has been great for me. If you want to see all this new update in action, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'm going to make more in-depth video of these features once I have truly tested them out. Leave a like if you like this video and you like Warcraft Lesser. Comment down below, what do you think about this new update of Warcraft Lesser 2.1? Do you like all the features? Do you have some features that you want to add it? Leave it in the comments down below. And is Warcraft Lesser your go-to 3D slicer or do you have a different slicer that you use? Thank you so much for watching and as always, Keep on 3D printing.